All right. Well, good afternoon, everybody from Charlotte, North Carolina. We're going to give it just a couple of minutes as we get folks huddled around the virtual table <laughs> to be a part, part of today's conversation with things. And so thanks again so much to everyone who's joined us here. Really excited about the content that we're going to be sharing today on a topic that I think is a really important one, all about student loans and, and student debt. And so what I will submit to you is that we have some amazing, amazing leaders from our Wells Fargo perspective that are going to be joining and sharing their expertise to help you start being planned for about student debt and aggressively, aggressively making sure that we're addressing it and, and working to, to eliminate it by using all means at your disposal uh, to be able to move things from there. So I promise you, please, if you take notes today, you're going to be able to put yourself on a path ultimately to get to repayment. And I know our partners today will also be sharing a little bit of their journey in those areas as well. Hey, as we continue on, I wanna give a big shout out as we get things started to our great partners over at API Scholars. These events would not be possible without their participation. So we've got Nicole and we've got Karen and we've got the entire team working in the background to help us today. So API Scholars team, thank you all so, so much for all of the great work that you're doing. And we're very, very excited to partner with you on this year's Beyond College webinar. You see this guy here, Dewey Norwood, I'm sorry. He's your host. I'm sorry, you got to deal with him for another seven hours for the presentation, but you can connect him with me on LinkedIn and we can certainly continue the conversations from there. Hey, I'm just gonna spotlight our updated about Wells Fargo page on the next slide here. This will just give you a sense of our institution. Some folks know about Wells Fargo and others may be learning about us maybe for the first time, but $1.9 trillion in, in assets team. One in three households across the US is going to have a banking relationship in some way, shape or, or form with, with our institution. You know, doing really, really great things in the small business space and, and in other kinds of areas. And again, 69, million customers across the globe, 69 million customers, which so is great, great connectivity across those areas. So special thanks to our partners in, in corporate communications and, and other areas of the firm that provide us with these great updates. I think this just gives you a wonderful snapshot of, of the work that's happening across our institution. So a little bit there about Wells Fargo. Uh, and again, a great piece here for our Wells Fargo Today channel that, can, that you can learn more about our, our great institution. All right, listen, as we continue on, we're not going to belabor it with, with a lot of pomp and circumstance with things from my perspective today. We're going to get right to our wonderful presenters. And so, scholars, I'm going to encourage everyone that's joining us today, go ahead and get connected in with our presenters there on LinkedIn. You'll find Casey Galindo, great, great partner of ours and working in our uh, campus program management role, and also Sylvia Jones another great partner of ours serving in a, in a similar capacity within our institution. You can find both of these wonderful partners on LinkedIn. I guarantee you that they'll accept your request. They said something about a $3 charge or something if you to, to accept requests. And see, I can, I can say this now because they're not on screen yet. Uh, but no, these are great partners. And what I'll add to this is, is these wonderful leaders have over 50 years of experience supporting students along their journey. And that's time working on campuses and engaging with students just like you all. So please take copious notes on everything that they share and make sure that you're building an action plan that works best for you and your family as you work down your student debt, ultimately eliminating it altogether. So Casey, Sylvia, I, I wanna bring you all on here for a moment and begin by thanking you all for being a part of, of today's discussion. And as we do that, I want to give you some quick metrics. You know, I'm a metrics kind of guy. So I always love to go in and, and take a look at our, our top performing schools. So this may be of interest to you. From a college perspective, we've got Fisk University, who I think actually came in first place. So one of our wonderful HBCUs there connecting in. The University of Nebraska at Omaha, it's, it's like a broken record, man. UNO, they show up in big numbers every month. So shout out to our, our wonderful students there. My home state, you got to love this. New York, we have great representation on today from New York University. So hope everybody down in the village is doing well. Uh, we've also got, you know, back, going back to the West Coast now, we've got great partners on joining from UCLA. So to all of the Bruins that are out there, thank you for dialing in. And then last but not least, the University of D.C. UDC is in the house. So 
Special thanks to our wonderful students there uh, from, from a UDC perspective. And then uh, before I give it to Sylvia, we'll give you the top uh, report outs for our higher education partners. The Hispanic Scholarship Fund actually came in first place. So I guess they get the gold medal. Point Foundation will take the silver here for their registrations. And of course, API scholars had to be in the top numbers. So API scholars came in with the third most referrals here for today. So final reminder, before we give it to Sylvia, scholars, we have received at least 50 questions from you all. We're gonna be addressing some of those during the Q&A portion of the broadcast and throughout today, but please utilize the chat feature, utilize the Q&A feature. We'll see those items as they come in real time. And remember, we will never read your name. If you submit a question to us, we're not gonna call, call you out in class and say, hey, this question came from Angie and this question came from Thomas. We're not gonna do that. But what we can do is then position those questions in the right kind of a way. And scholars, I promise you, if it's a question that's top of mind for you, there's someone else that's either joining us live or watching the playback that can benefit from it as well. So keep those questions coming in and we'll answer as many of those as we can, again, confidentially without sharing your name with today's presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, with that said, I want to bring on a friend and a trusted partner in Sylvia Jones, who's going to uh, give a quick introduction and then give Casey an opportunity to be introduced and, and then jump into our great content for today. So Sylvia, thank you so much for joining us here for today. And you are on literally on vacation right now, but you're still hanging out with Norwood. I don't know why, but, but you decided to show up. <laughs> Always have time for you. Oh, thank you so much, Dewey, and uh, uh, welcome, scholars. We are so excited to be sharing information with you today around student loan repayment. I'm going to have my uh, best friend at work, Casey Galindo, introduce herself, and she'll turn it back over to me after that, and we'll get started. So, Casey, you want to go ahead? Sure, absolutely. And good afternoon, scholars. Um, like Sylvia mentioned, she is my best friend at work. We talk like every day. So we were super excited to be able to join you all today. And thank you, Dewey and Nicole for inviting us. Um, hopefully you guys will get a lot of information. Like Dewey said, don't hesitate to you know ask us any questions. Sylvia and I both had student loans and we're here to tell you it is possible to pay them off. So we look forward to sharing information with you today. Back to you, Sylvia. Thank you. And thank you. And Casey, by the way, guys, is based in San Antonio, Texas. Um, and I am actually based in Macon or Middle Georgia. So uh, we're excited uh, to be with you all today. And like Casey said, drop your questions in the chat, uh, Q&A. We're here to answer. This is a session for you. And so we want it to be interactive in the sense that you're going to be able to um, ask all the questions that you ever wanted to ask around student loan repayment. And while Repaying it may not be so fun all the time. It is something that, uh, you know, some information that you need. And so we want to make sure that we answer your questions. So we're here for you today. So let's go ahead and get started with the next slide. So first, I'll tell you a little bit about our agenda today. So we're going to be talking about um, really student loan statistics. I like this slide because it really does cover uh, some of the detailed information around student loans. Uh, I think you'll appreciate that. We're going to talk about preparing yourself financially when it comes to repaying your student loans. So we're trying to share some information around, you know, what you need to do to be prepared financially and be successful in your student loan repayment. What to expect once you're in repayment. And so that's always good to know so that you're prepared. We're going to talk about student loan post, uh, postponement as well as repayment, of course. Uh, and also student loan refinancing and consolidation. What does that mean? What are the benefits? What are some of the pros and cons? And so Casey's gonna be covering information on that. And then finally, we're gonna um, help you out with some additional resources that we think you might find helpful as you start this journey of student loan repayment. So next slide. So like I said, we're gonna talk about uh, some statistics here. And I really do appreciate this slide because it really does give you a good picture of um, who's borrowing. Um, and like I said, a lot of students do have to borrow. And so when you think about borrowing, a good number of students do have to borrow to pay for their college education. And you can see here more specifically, 30 to 40% of undergraduate students do have to take out student loan. So you're not alone. The average bachelor's degree in 2019 for a four-year uh, public institution uh, those that was $27,000. That's what a student had to take out that attended a public university back in 2019. 
And then for a private student um, loan or a private college, I'm sorry, the debt was $33,700. So that gives you a good idea of public versus private uh, institution and the student loan debt that they graduated with. And then the average student loan borrower pays $393 per month for their student loan in their student loan repayment. And the average student loan debt for graduate school in 2015-16 was 66,000. So you can see once you start graduate school, that um, amount of student loan debt does increase a bit. And this information uh, was the most recent data taken from the National Center for Educational Statistics. Next slide. So as we start talking and, and get into student loan repayment, what we really want to talk about and some of the questions that actually came about and questions that we get all the time is really all about uh, preparing and, and preparing yourself financially. And so we really wanted to make sure that we address some of the things when it comes to being prepared financially. And when you think about that, one of the things that you really you always want to do is make sure that you have financial goals. And so when you think about just paying off um, debt in general, it's always good to have a plan to set goals. And when you're setting goals, it's just not random goals. You have a specific goal and a specific timeline into which you want to reach that goal. And so it's always important to put a timeline on your goal. And then once you have the goal, you put the timeline in place, you want to make sure that you take action. Because you know if you don't take action, if you listen to a a lot of information without taking action, it's kind of all for naught, right? You're, you're, you don't want to waste your time. You really want to understand it, prepare financially, and, and start and take action and, and, and make sure that you knock out that student loan debt as soon as possible. And you can do this by creating a budget. And sometimes, you know, we're like cringe when we hear the word budget, but it's important that you create a budget because when I think about a budget, it really is creating um, understanding where your money is coming from. So knowing your income or your income sources and then being able to track your expenses. So knowing where your money is going, right? And if you don't tell your money where to go, it's gonna leave without you ever even knowing what happened, right? And so creating a budget is very important when it comes to your student loans and making sure that you're preparing financially. And you want to also make sure that one of the things that I did as a best practice when I was actually in school is um, we'll talk about grace periods later, but prior to going into repayment during my grace period, I made sure that when I started getting my monthly income, I started factoring in what if I was actually paying on that student loan now, and then I'd set that money aside so that I knew that when that grace period ended, I was prepared to pay on my student loans. And actually the money that I had set aside, I went ahead and made a, a, a lump sum payment with that money that I had saved up during the grace period. So you wanna make sure that you are ready and prepared during that grace period before your actual loan repayment begins. And it's always a great opportunity to take advantage of the resources and tools that are online. I'm sure a lot of your financial institutions will have resources and tools available to you, as well as your loan servicer. And we'll also talk about your loan servicer. And then, you know, once you're taking all of this, you've created the budget, you know where your money is going, you want to make sure that you evaluate your progress. Are you reaching that goal uh, in the time frame that you've set for yourself? Can you do better, right? And so it's always good to reevaluate your financial goals to make sure that you're on track and see what you can do differently, perhaps to pay that loan off sooner. And, and a great tip here is to make it automatic. Um, set up ACH so that you make your um, payments automatic so you, you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, am I on time? When is it due? Did I forget? If you make it automatic, you're gonna be on time every single time. And that's really important when it comes to credit. Next slide. So now let's really talk about what to expect once you do actually go into repayment and you do have to start incorporating that actual monthly payment into your budget. So next slide. So when you think about repaying your student loans, let's talk about a little bit, I'm gonna tell you about um, some of the different type of loans. And so let's do a refresher here on some of the federal loans that you may be repaying during this time. And so we have a number of different types of loans here. And so 
first, let's talk about the federal direct loan program. You know, I talked about that grace period and it's, uh, it's important to understand that grace period is that amount of time that you have prior to going into repayment. Um, so prior to, once you graduate from school, okay, or drop below half time, or, um, so all of those things really do incorporate um, when we talk about the grace period. But the different types of loans that you'll have are federal direct loans. So when you think about that federal direct loan that you may have, and that's probably the majority of you may have that federal direct loan, it's either going to be subsidized or unsubsidized, right? And so the main thing with that is the government is the lender, okay, on your federal direct loan. All right. The also with the government being the lender, you, the student, are the primary borrower and that interest rate is fixed. So you should know what your interest rate is because it's fixed. And so it's a, a specific interest rate there. And the main difference between subsidized and unsubsidized loan is really who's paying the interest. So during you during your time of school, um, the government is actually paying the interest on those subsidized loans and during approved times of your grace period, right? And if you have an unsubsidized loan, then you, the student, are responsible for paying the interest. Now, with the Perkins loan, um, you do have a grace period there as well. And typically with the Perkins loan, that grace period may be nine months. The school is the actual lender, okay? So it's administered by the school. You, the student, is a primary borrower for the Perkins loan, and then that interest rate is fixed as well. Now, when it comes to the parent loan and the graduate plus loan, the federal government, again, is the lender. Um, the parent on that parent loan is the primary borrower. So on your parent plus loan, your parent is the primary borrower. On your graduate student loan, the student is the borrower. And on both those loans, the interest rate is fixed. Now, when it comes to a private student loan, that loan is, um, the, the loan comes from a private institution, okay? And either the student or the parent may be the borrower. It just depends on how that loan is set up. And then the interest rate can be either fixed or variable. So you have a little more, a um, few more different things that could happen uh, with your private student loan. And it's always important to contact your private student loan institution for to get specific answers on the questions that you may have. And then just um, in addition, for those of you who may have borrowed prior to July 1st, uh, 2010, you may have received loans under that Federal Family Education Loan Program or FELP. And so you may not have received a direct student loan, which is the program that we have today. So now let's go ahead and go to our next slide. Now let's actually talk about when student loan repayment begins, because that's important. And, and here, you know, I was talking about grace periods early, but really here is where I really wanna focus on, on, on grace periods. And grace periods really um, happen uh, during that time. So for example, uh, once you graduate or drop below half time of enrollment or after leaving school, okay, um, when, when that happens, you will have a grace period, okay? So when you think about your federal direct loans and your private loans, during that time, you have a six month grace period. So let's say, for example, you graduate, you have, a, you have six months before you actually go into repayment, okay? So that's when your repayment will actually begin six months after. And typically it's the same with a private student loan. But like I said, if you have a private student loan, I always encourage you to check with your um, lending institution to see what that grace period is, because you do have time before you go into repayment. All right. And then you have your federal Perkins loan. You see there you have a nine month grace period on your federal Perkins loan. So after you graduate, drop below half time, or if you actually leave school, you're going to have nine months before you go into repayment. And that's important to, to know and to understand. And then with your um, direct plus loans, which we talked about that parent loan or that graduate plus loan, they're a little bit different. So on your parent loan, 
um, that loan goes into repayment after that loan is fully dispersed. And typically it's over two disbursements or fall and spring. But once that loan is fully dispersed, then, your, then that parent loan will go into repayment. And then with the graduate plus loan is uh, that graduate loan for that student borrower. Then again, you have that six month grace period. So after graduating, dropping below half time or leaving school for whatever reason, then you do have six months before you officially um, go into repayment. So now let's discuss on the next slide some of your responsibilities as a student loan borrower. So if you think about um, borrowing, you know, a lot of times you think um, you, you always have that obligation to repay. So if you borrowed uh, a student loan, you will have to repay it. Um, that's the sad news. But hopefully, you know, you're getting good information on and we'll provide you with some additional tips um, to make sure that you're paying, you're paying on time every time. And also, you know, like I, I, I think I said earlier on the ACH, maybe, you know, you can lower your interest rate if you make it automatic but you, you are responsible for paying back your student loan, okay? So, so that, that's the sad news, but the good news is, you know, we hopefully will give you the tips and tools so that you can have a successful student loan repayment experience. And so let's think about this. So repaying your student loan, you do have to repay it, like I said, as agreed, but the good thing about student loans is there's a lot of flexibility. Casey's gonna talk to you about the different options that you have. But as long as you stay in contact with your um, servicer, you know, they can help you through this process, but you do have to pay it as you agreed. And you wanna make sure that you're opening up and you're reading all of your mail, all of your emails as it relates to student loans. And also uh, when you think about email, you want to consider adding your loan servicer as your lender to your contacts so that your emails that you receive don't go into junk mail so that you get that information and you're responding timely. So it's important because it is your responsibility to respond to your, your lender or your servicer. And then you wanna know when your repayment begins. That's your responsibility. Um, and I know I used to talk to students a lot of times and they would tell me, well, Ms. Jones, you know, I had no idea. I can't believe, you know, they're getting ready to turn me into collections because they didn't tell me, you know, I got nothing. Well, you, you know that you graduated or you know that you left school. And so know that that student loan is going to come due within right after that grace period ends. So it is your responsibility, whether you received communication or not, because I guarantee you, they will tell you they tried to reach out to you. So regardless, it is your responsibility to figure it out and know when your payment, repayment begins and start timely. And if you have any issues, as long as you're communicating, I will tell you that for the most part, you shouldn't have any issues. They want to just know what's going on so that they can help you. Also, um, you know, when it comes to repaying your student loan, it's important because your credit does matter. So you, you do wanna make sure that you know when that student loan starts and you're paying it on time. Um, even, like I said, even if you don't receive a bill, because that information is reported to the credit bureau, as you may or may not know, but it is reported to the credit bureau. And then you want to make sure, like I said, that you always connect with your servicer and you keep them informed. So for example, if you move locations or if you change your email address, you want to make sure that you're connecting with them because it's up to you you to make sure that your information, that they receive information um, that they need. So now let's go ahead to the next slide and really talk about why that credit matters that I talked about. Um, hey, Sylvia, before you go on, um, sure. there was a really great question that came in. Um, before we go a little bit further into the presentation, it was around the sure. grace period. So okay. um, it's something that you and I know all too well. So is it correct that if you go on to graduate school immediately after your bachelor's, your undergrad loans will go into, uh, will not go into grace period? So here's what I would say to that. And Casey, please feel free to chime in and add to that. Um, so once you graduate, uh, what happens is your undergrad institution will report that you've graduated. And so what you want to do, if you go on to graduate school, is make sure that you report um, to the registrar 
um, that you know you're in graduate school and what they will do is then report it to the correct agencies but also um, make sure that you notify your loan servicer because they can also uh, they will also receive that information and then make sure that your status says that you're back in an in-school deferment and that's the important piece there is that if you go on to graduate school you want to make sure that your status says that you remain in that in um, in school deferment option. So Casey, do you want to add to that? Yeah, I'll add just um, to add to what you what you just shared, Sylvia. So with your grace period, you will actually get that grace period once. Um, and I'll give you an example. So for example, when I graduated with my bachelor's, um, I didn't go to graduate school right away. So I winded up, um, I was out of school for like two years. So my undergraduate loans, I went into my grace period use that up. And then I had to go back into repayment uh, or I went into repayment on my student loans. When I went back to graduate school, what I did is I postponed my loans because I was at least half time, like Sylvia was mentioning. So I was able to put them into a deferment status. Now, when I graduated, what happened was I went into repayment immediately on my undergraduate loans. And then the graduate loan that I had, I had a new six months grace period on that. So to that question, just keep in mind, you do get one grace period. So if you even make one student loan payment um, back to that particular, to your loan servicer, you've used up your grace period. So now if you graduate, say, you know, you're going to graduate next spring in May of 2022, and you start graduate school immediately fall of 2022, you will keep your six months grace period because you wouldn't have gone through that six months. So yes, you would still have a grace period on your undergraduate loans. And then if you took out any loans in graduate school, you would you know, have the six months on those as well. But if you do keep in mind, if you do go into repayment on those loans at any point, you can definitely put them into a deferment when you go back to school. However, when you graduate immediately, you'll go into repayment on those loans, which is what happened to me because I took that break between undergrad and grad. Great and great explanation, um, Casey. So just remember, um, you know, uh, grace period, did you use it or not? And also, um, if you go back to school, you can certainly put them in deferment. But when you get out of, um, once you graduate, you will immediately go back into repayment, right? And so these, these are some things too that you can um, talk to about your servicer, but absolutely. So thanks for explaining that. And that that's your real life experience from Casey Galindo. <laughs> so thank you for that. Um, so now, you know, like I said, any other questions, Casey, before I start talking about, about credit? Are we good? We're good to go. Okay, perfect. So um, as I mentioned before, you know, we, we talked about student loan repayment. We talked about creating a budget, um, setting goals, timeframes, and, and taking action. One of the things that, that will impact, uh, you know, your, your student loans is really understanding your your responsibilities and just knowing that your credit does indeed matter with this because it's up to you to take control of, of your debt when it comes to managing your credit. It's really important because that student loan is, is out there, right? And if you see here, if you want to know anything about your, um, your student loans in general, um, your servicer can provide you information, but also you know, you can check your credit report and that's important. Check your credit report at annualcreditreport.com, okay? Credit is valuable, we know that. We, we put a lot on credit in this country and so you wanna make sure that your credit is good and also that's why we said make it automatic, play on time every single time. So annualcreditreport.com is where you're gonna go um, to review your credit, your information and you'll be able to see your loans there. In addition to that, you want to make sure that you're reviewing your loans, okay? You wanna check your credit report for accuracy, all right? And if you ever find any errors, you want to make sure that you, you know, dispute those as depending on what you're trying to correct, but you may have um, errors on your credit report. So you wanna uh, make sure you check that out. And then you want to make sure that you take advantage of any resources that your financial institution offers you when it comes to checking your credit score, credit score, or your FICO score, um, as we call it. And so you wanna make sure that you're looking at that. 
and you can get great tips and tools from your financial institution. I know we have a lot of that here at Wells, but most financial institutions have a lot around credit because it is important. And so you wanna make sure that you're paying those student loans on time because most likely when you graduate, um, if you think about it, that's probably the largest debt that you have. And uh, next to buying a home, it's, it may be the largest debt that you might ever have, right? At one point in time. And so it's important that you manage that, um, really uh, manage that well, okay? Because it can be an asset for you as well. If you manage it well, you know, it will help you with your credit score. And so, like I said, paying on time every single time, absolutely important. Um, you know, don't be late and you won't because you're gonna make it automatic like we talked about um, earlier so that it won't negatively impact your score. And then you wanna keep in mind that that credit history so you paying on time is the largest percentage that makes up your credit score. That's at 35%. And that's why it is so important. And that's why credit does matter around your student loan, re, uh, student loan payments. And so you wanna make sure that you're, you're paying on time, you make it automatic so you don't have to worry about it. And then, you know, like I said, to help manage your credit, please make sure that you're reaching out to your financial institution and also reach out to your loan servicer they're there for you and just keep in contact with them if you ever have any issues. Next slide. And so now we're going to talk about, you know, we talked about building budgets and credit. Who do I send the, who do I send my payments to? And so this is what we're going to talk about as I wrap up my uh, portion of the presentation is, is, is um, where you, who your loan servicer is and what they actually do. So if you see here, um, a loan servicer really acts on behalf of the lender and the job of the loan servicer is to actually collect payments as well as answer questions. I told you to contact them if you ever have any questions or issues. That's their job that, to collect payments and also to help you. And they're also there to administer any type of administrative tasks that need to take place. So that's what the loan servicer does. Because if you think about it, um, your lender, like I told you with the federal loans, is the federal government. And then the federal government um, also, so then they have what's called loan servicers, okay? And so how do you find out who your loan servicer is? Um, you will go to, um, we have some recent changes here, and so I really want to make sure that I get this information um, to you correctly, um, is that you want to make sure that now there's a change. So you go to nslds.ed.gov, okay? So because of that new change, that's where you're going to go to find out information about your student loan. So nsl.ed.gov. When you go there, it's gonna redirect you to studentaid.gov. And then there you'll be able to sign in or to log in. And it's gonna give you all the information that you need about who your loan servicer is, okay? Um, what status your loan is in. It's gonna give you a, a snapshot of your loans as well as your grants, the type of federal loans that you have. So all those loans that I talked about earlier, it's gonna let you know if you have those particular loans, the original amount that you borrowed, uh, the interest that's accrued, and then your current balances. And so that's gonna, um, studentaid.gov is like I said, it's where it's going to redirect you but that is going to give you a lot of information. And then for your private student loans, you want to um, connect with your loan servicer, whoever that is with your private loan. Okay, so con contact your private lender and also annualcreditreport.com will give you additional information on your private lender. Um, so I'm gonna ask Casey, I'm gonna turn it over to her, but also um, she's had some recent experiences uh, with being redirected to the studentaid.gov. So Casey, Take it over and go ahead and tell tell us about your experience. Thank you. Sure, absolutely, Sylvia, and thanks. And just like Sylvia mentioned, um, there has been a recent change to the website um, where you can go to view your information. So again, just as Sylvia had mentioned, you would want to go to nslds.ed.gov. And um, yeah, again, it was a recent change. I will say, um, I actually still have my login to, to view my information. So 
when you go to NSLDS, which I like to do occasionally because, you know, sometimes just making sure it does save paid in full, it's, it's a nice feeling. So I will acknowledge that I do go out there uh, just as a verification that I see it. So um, do know that uh, there is a change, but when you do, like Sylvia mentioned, if you go to nslds.ed.gov, you will be redirected to the federal student aid site. You'll see a button there that says log in to view information. So you'll click on that button. Um, you can sign in, like Sylvia mentioned, when I signed in, I can still see every single loan that I took out for both undergraduate and graduate school. I can see how much I borrowed. I can see the type of loan that I had. I can see who the servicer is. I can see the status. So I can see that it is paid in full. So if you're not quite sure who your lenders are, this is gonna be a great site for you to be able to go um, get that information, figure out exactly who's going to be um, servicing your loans, who you will be working with when you are, do go into repayment. Now, um, on the next slide, I am going to be starting about talking um, around student loan postponement and repayment. But before we do, I know we had a question that had come into the chat and it was around international student loans. And so um, I'll ask Sylvia to chime in here um, if there's anything additional she wants to add, but there are loans that um, potentially could be used by students who are international students. I will share that those would be private student loan options that you would look at exploring. Um, one of the things that you can do is not all private student loan lenders will actually um, lend to international students. So what you would want to do, a good starting place is to touch base with the financial aid office and ask them, you know, I am looking, I'm an international student, I'm looking at wanting to explore private student loan, how would I go about doing that? You might find sometimes that the financial aid office actually has a lender list, they may have a section on there for international students. But if you are an international student looking at possibly exploring private student loans, say, for undergraduate or graduate studies, um, definitely touch base with financial aid office, have that conversation with them. Um, they're there to help you and guide you as to, you know, you might want to explore these lenders because they do um, often communicate with those private student loan lenders. So they'll know a lot about which loans you'd be eligible to pursue. Was there anything that you would add, Sylvia? You, you covered everything um, around the private student loan. The only thing I would ask, uh, add rather is that you, may have an option if the actual school has any type of loan program for international students or for students in general. And so I would just say, you know, check that out as well. Great ad, thanks Sylvia. So next we are going to dive into discussing student loan postponement and repayment options. So let's go ahead and go to the next slide. And what we're gonna do, um, is we're gonna talk first about, if we can go back one slide to repayment guidance. Thank you, perfect, Nicole. So first we wanted to provide some guidance around things to consider when you go into repayment. So we know that you know there's gonna be many loan servicers and loan providers um, out there that you may be working with, depending on you know who that's going to be. But one of the great tools that they will have is they will actually have an online account management service tool. And through these types of services, online account management services, you can actually view some specific detailed information. So you can see that, you know, how much do you have outstanding? What are the interest rates? What's that monthly payment amount? And you'll see a lot more real-time information than you would find um, on, say, like NSLDS, because it's going to be current, it's going to be updated, real-time information. So one of the things you might wanna consider doing is signing up for those online account management systems because it will help you also to be able to track what's going on with your student loans. Now, the next one is gonna be the loan simulator. And this is gonna be something that's gonna allow you to get an early look at you know, which repayment plan may work best for your specifically federal student loans. So this isn't gonna necessarily help if you had private student loans, but again, if you're getting close to graduation, trying to figure out, you know, which repayment plan is going to work best for me, you can de definitely leverage that tool. You can actually find the loan simulator on the federal student aid site. So you would go to studentaid.gov. And there, again, you'll be able to find specific information. It's a great tool that will help you to kind of figure out which repayment plan may work best for you based on the federal loans that you've taken out. 
Now the next one's going to be um, repayment calculator. This will, you know, be something that's available that can help you to determine, you know, what are those monthly payments going to be for your loan. So that's something else that you can definitely take advantage of as you're looking to figure out what those monthly payments are going to look like. Now, next, if you're considering public service loan forgiveness or PSLF, I know this was something that we had a few students um, submit some questions about public service loan forgiveness. What you definitely want to do is check out the public service loan forgiveness help tool. So there's an actual help tool that you can find, again, on the federal student aid site. So if you think about it, we're going to be referencing that site quite a bit. You'll find NSLDS. Um, we just talked about the loan simulator. Um, the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Help Tool is also going to be on the federal student aid site. So again, studentaid.gov. And this tool is going to be really helpful to help you understand more about Public Service Loan Forgiveness, or PSLF as, as we call it for short. Um, you'll find information about, you know, what do you need to do to be able to participate and possibly have your loans forgiven. So you definitely want to take advantage of that. The other thing that's always great for students and we will always, you know, share with you is contact your loan servicer because your loan servicer is going to be doing all of that daily operations and maintenance on your student loans. So they're also going to be a great point of contact. So you definitely want to, you know, leverage the public service loan forgiveness tool and then also have conversations with your loan servicers to see, you know, I saw this information. Um, what do I have to do? You know, you may have to fill out paperwork, be enrolled in a particular repayment plan, um, be working for a qualified employer. So there's a lot of things that go into public service loan forgiveness. So you definitely, again, want to leverage that tool, have a conversation with your loan servicer so that they can kind of walk through and give you those specific details. Now, um, the other thing is uh, you'll want to understand your repayment options. And we're going to be touching on that in greater detail a little bit further along in this presentation. And you're going to find specifically for federal student loans, there's going to be a lot of different repayment options that you'll have available to you. And I know Sylvia and I were probably, I'm going to probably date us by saying this. There are a lot of options that weren't available when we were repaying back our student loans. So there's definitely plans that you can take advantage of that could help based on wherever you are financially. So you definitely want to understand what options you have available um, to make sure you're making a decision that works for you, again, within your budget. And then lastly, once you enroll in a payment plan, consider making payments automatic. And I know Sylvia was touching on this earlier, you know, making payments automatic, signing up for ACH. Um, you know, not only is this going to ensure that your payments are made on time every time, and that's something Sylvia talked about when we were talking about credit, but sometimes you may find, and this is something that you have to be proactive with, is um, you may get an interest rate discount for signing up for ACH and having those payments automatically deducted. And what I mean by that, um, like an interest rate type of um, benefit that you can take advantage of to lower that is Say, for example, on private student loans, a loan provider may say, we will give you a quarter percent interest rate reduction for making your payments automatically, sign up for ACH and have those automatically drafted out of your checking account. Now, I will share um, and just the experience that I've always told students is this not this is not something that happens automatically. So this is where you're going to have to initiate and ask your loan servicer directly. Are there any sort of benefits that I can take advantage of to help me lower my interest rates? So again, that's something that um, not only twofold, it, you know, setting it up by ACH and automatically makes sure that, and it really ensures that your payments are made on time every time, which is definitely a big part of your credit and something you want to protect, as Sylvia was talking about. But also there may be a potential um, opportunity to get a discount that you can take advantage of. So now what we want to go ahead and do on the next slide is talk a little bit more around student loan postponement options. So we're actually going to begin with deferment um, and that's what we're going to talk about first. So the deferment is going to be a period of time in which the payment repayment of that principal and interest on your loan is temporarily postponed. So now it's going to be important to note um, that, especially like, for example, if you have a subsidized student loan, you will not be responsible for paying that accrued interest. 
if you have a Perkins loan um, during most of those deferments, you will also have your interest postponed. However, you will remain responsible for any interest that accrues on the unsubsidized loans or the plus loans for parents or graduate students. So again, keep in mind, um, if you have an unsubsidized or a graduate parent loan, um, if we have some graduate students on the call today, any interest that accrues will be your responsibility. And what happens is that accrued interest will actually be capitalized after that approved deferment period. So, um, you know, deferments, again, gives you that flexibility and option to be able to postpone payments if you need to. Just be aware of how that interest accrues. Now, the second one that you see here is going to be forbearance, and it's going to sound very similar to deferments. So forbearance is going to be a period of time, again, where you may be able to stop making payments or potentially reduce your monthly payment for a limited time. Now, during approved forbearances, interest will accrue on the federal loans. So any interest that recruit, accrues is going to be capitalized. And during forbearance periods, it doesn't matter what type of federal loan you have, the interest is going to accrue. So we do want to make that note. Now, there are two types of forbearances that are available to students. And I do want to note that when we're talking about these specifically, it's going to be for your federal student loans, as I've been mentioning. So with forbearances, there's, as I said, there's going to be two types. So there'll be a general forbearance, and then there's going to be a mandatory forbearance. So with the general forbearance, the loan servicer is actually going to be the one who's going to decide whether or not to grant your request. So you would be contacting your loan servicer, you know, if you need to look at exploring different types of repayment options, you would reach out to them, um, ask them what's available. If they, you know, say you don't qualify for a deferment, but you have a forbearance option, they will be the ones under a general forbearance to determine whether or not if you qualify. Now, if you um, are looking at a mandatory forbearance, this is really going to be um, if the borrower meets all of the requirements, the loan servicer is required to grant that mandatory forbearance. So what you want to do is definitely check with your loan servicer and have that conversation with them to see, you know, one, what are those options if you do need to postpone student loan payments? Um, you know, do you qualify for a deferment? If you don't qualify for deferment, can you qualify for an, a forbearance? And then you'll go through and um, see, you know, which type of forbearance, if you have to pursue that option, you would qualify for. Now, to give you an example um, of, you know, what a mandatory forbearance or who could qualify, think of um, one of the things that I always think about when I've worked with students in the past, it's going to be think about those medical residencies. So they may be looking at a forbearance and a mandatory forbearance. So as long as they meet the requirements, that's something that the, lo the loan servicer has to grant them. So typically um, in the past, when I've worked with students in forbearances, it's typically been with those who are doing, for example, like medical residency. So they're exploring that as an option. Now, um, one of the things that if you're gonna have private student loans um, or if you have private student loans, you definitely wanna check with them specifically um, the deferments and forbearance options that are available under federal programs are not av available under private student loans. So you'll have to check specifically with your private lending institution to find out exactly what types of options do you have when it comes to postponement. Do they offer a type of deferment or forbearance that you can take advantage of? Now, one of the things that I know Sylvia and I in the past in working with students that we um, always share is to make sure to continue to make your student loan payments. Um, and by that, what I mean is in the past, for example, um, when I worked with students, some a couple of graduate students, um, they had thought they took care of their deferment because they filled out the paperwork, sent it to the loan servicer. So they stopped making payments on their student loans. And they didn't realize that paperwork hadn't been processed yet. So they stopped making payments, didn't know that they were approved and that all the paperwork had been processed. So they started becoming delinquent and it was showing up on their credit report. So what you want to make sure you do is continue to make your payments until you are able to verify with your loan servicer that that particular deferment or forbearance has been granted. Again, because you just want to be mindful that student loans are reported to the credit bureaus. So even though you may 
um, have filled out the paperwork, just ensure that that has been processed and that you are in fact in an approved status. Now, I know we had a question um, that came in with regards to if um, you're a co-borrower on your daughter's student loan, is there any chance we can modify the loan um, releasing my name? So um, that's a great question. And I'm going to go ahead and, and answer. And Sylvia, this will be where I, if I miss anything, please feel free to chime in. So typically, uh, you'll see co-borrowers uh, when it comes to private student loans. And so um, it's not uncommon for that to occur. And depending on the lender that you took your loan through, um, they may sometimes offer what's called a co-signer release option. Now, it will vary from lender to lender. One, do they offer it? And secondly, they may sometimes say, you have to make the first 24 on-time payments. We'll reevaluate to see if we can release the co-signer of any further obligation. So again, um, typically that's something that you're going to see on private student loans. Um, it will depend on the lender that you took your private student loan through. Um, and again, it's gonna be uh, something that will vary depending on who's offering. Is there anything you would add, Sylvia? Uh, so the only thing that I will say, if, you, if you're a parent, um, I think, and, and, and you've taken, you've basically co-signed on a loan. So just to kind of, what it is is when you're asking them to release you as a um, you know co-signer, it's what they will do um, is basically reevaluate that student borrower on their own. Do they have the credit to stand alone and and you know do they pass all those qualifications to make those payments on their own? So they're basically going to do a credit check uh, and go through all the credit process to make sure that that co-borrower or that borrower, I should say, can get the loan on their own. So that's kind of when you're thinking about it, that's that's what you're thinking about, okay? You 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 might know a little bit about whoever their finances and so that's what they're that's what the um, lending institution is going to do. They're going to do a reevaluation on that particular borrower to see if they will are they're willing to release them. So, yeah. Thanks, Sylvia. Mm -hmm. Perfect, so let's go ahead and move on to the next slide. And this is where we're gonna start talking more specifically about the different types of repayment options. Now, I will note that these repayment options that we're gonna be discussing are specifically going to be um, federal, uh, federal student loan repayment options. So we'll actually cover, they're not all listed here, so this is just the beginning, and then we'll have another slide where we'll share some high level overview information um, on some additional repayment plan options that are gonna be available. Now, it's important to note, and this is something we always like to share with students, it's, you know, even though you may select or be assigned a particular repayment plan um, when you first go into repayment, do know that you can change your federal loan repayment plan at any time. So to do that, what you wanna do is go ahead and um, reach out to your loan servicer, have that conversation with them, let them know, you know, the repayment plan that I'm currently in right now is not working for me. What are some of the other options that I have with regards to switching my repayment plan for my federal loans? And they'll be able to go through that information with you. So let's go ahead and start. We'll start on the left-hand side and then move right. So we're gonna start first with the standard repayment plan. And these payments are actually going to be fixed they can be for up to a 10 year repayment period. And overall, when you think about it, this plan is gonna save you money over time because the monthly payments um, might be slightly higher, higher, but you're gonna save and you'll pay that loan off quickly, but you'll save um, over time with regards to interest. Now, if say you only borrow $5,000, you're not gonna have 10 years to pay that off. So the lender or the loan servicer rather is going to schedule those payments. So you could potentially use standard repayment option as one of those. Now, next is gonna be the graduated repayment plan. Now, under, under the graduated repayment plan, you're actually gonna start out with smaller payments in the beginning, and then they're gonna increase every two years after that. You will still be given up to a 10-year repayment period to pay off that loan. And then the last plan that you see here on the screen is gonna be the extended repayment plan. 
So under this plan, you'll have up to 25 years to pay off the loan, which means, you know, because you're going to have that longer length of time, potentially, you would pay more interest over the long term. Now, you can have, um, you can elect to have your payments actually set up under a standard or graduated type of plan underneath this extended umbrella. Now, I will share that with the extended repayment plan, you do have to have more than 30,000 in outstanding federal debt to qualify for this program. So that is one of the requirements for the extended repayment plan. So next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about some of the income-based repayment plan options on the next slide. And this is something that you probably hear about a lot. Maybe you read about it in the papers, hear about it on the news um, when they're talking about income-based type of repayment plans. So most federal student loans will offer some sort of income-based repayment plan, which typically falls under two categories. So one is gonna be the income-sensitive plan and the other are gonna be the income-driven repayment plans. So what we're gonna do again is we're gonna start left and then we'll go right. So we'll start with the income-sensitive repayment plan. So under the income-sensitive repayment plan, it's gonna actually be based on gross monthly income. So for this plan, you will have needed to borrow your federal loans under what was called the Federal Family Education Loan Program. So this would have been, if you remember, kind of think back to the beginning of the presentation, Sylvia had mentioned um, that caveat of July of 2010. So you would have, um, if you borrowed before then, you could have potentially had your loans under the Federal Family Education Loan Program, which is one of the requirements for the income sensitive repayment plan. Now the income repayment plan can give you up to 10 years to pay off the loan. <clears throat> so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about that other category I mentioned, the income driven repayment plans. So what you definitely want to do here is, you know, there's a lot of information, um, a lot of, you know, things that need to be taken into consideration for these plans. So you definitely want to talk to your loan servicer regarding the details and information that will need to be provided. Another great tool that I mentioned when we started our conversation, I talked about the loan simulator. That could be a helpful tool in determining if you could potentially qualify for one of these income-driven type of payment plans. But again, your loan servicer is there to really help you and have those discussions and answer questions and let you know whether or not you qualify. So let's start first with the Income Contingent Repayment Plan, or ICR for short. Borrowers must have taken out their federal student loan under the direct loan program. And I will share that payments are going to actually be recalculated each year. And you could potentially have up to 25 years in repayment. Next is going to be the income based repayment plan or IBR for short. Under this plan, you as the borrower must have taken out your federal student loans either under the direct loan program or you could have borrowed them under that family education loan program. Now, I will share again, payments are going to be recalculated each year, and it can be up to 20 to 25 years, depending on when you took out your loan, as far as how long you could have to pay those off. Then if we move to that third one, you'll see it's called the pay as you earn repayment plan or pay for short. Now, under this plan, you as a borrower must have taken out your federal student loan under the direct loan program. Again, um, as you can kind of tell uh, by the name income-based, your payment is going to have to be recalculated again each year, and you could have up to potentially 20 years to pay off your loans. Now, the last repayment plan is going to be the revised pay-as-you-earn repayment plan or repay. Borrowers must have taken out their federal student loan under the direct loan program. And again, your payments are going to be recalculated each year. Um, under this plan, you could have up to either 20 or 25 years. Now, it's going to depend on, you know, did you take your loans out for undergraduate studies or did you take them out for graduate studies? That's going to determine whether you have 20 years or 25 years to pay off those loans. Now, I will share under all four of these um, income-driven repayment plans, any remaining balance after that repayment period ends may be forgiven. 
Now, I will share that you may have to pay income tax on any amount that is forgiven. So you would definitely want to consult with your tax advisor at that point to see, you know, um, do you have any obligation? If so, how much? What is that going to look like? Now, I will, again, bring up public service loan forgiveness because that was a question that came up from, you know, a few of our scholars a couple of times. So if you are interested in public service loan forgiveness, um, definitely you want to consider leveraging that public service loan forgiveness help, um, help tool on the federal student aid site. Again, that's um, studentaid.gov. And this tool is going to really help you to understand more about public service loan forgiveness and what you need to do to potentially participate and possibly have your loans forgiven. Now, um, then on the next slide, what we wanted to do is we wanted to cover two more programs because you've heard us talk about and mentioned during the presentation Perkins loans and private student loans. So we wanted to touch on that as well. So under the federal Perkins loan program, um, borrowers have a nine month grace period, as Sylvia had mentioned earlier. Repayment can be up to 10 years on this loan and your loan payment will be sent to either the school or the designated servicer. Now, loan cancellation or discharge, discharge options may be available, but this is again where you're going to want to have that conversation with the loan servicer or with the school to find out directly how would you qualify for those and what criteria needs to be met. And then on the other side, you're going to see some information under private student loan program. Now, typically, as Sylvia had mentioned when she was giving the overview of when you go into repayment, typically you'll have a six-month grace period. And repayment can range anywhere from five to 20 years. It's really gonna depend on your lender, your program of study. So if you had a private student loan or if you have a private student loan, you're gonna to need to check with them directly to see you know, what kind of options do you have available? Um, what sort of grace period? Or do you have different repayment plans? All that sort of information they'll be able to provide you directly. So again, check with them to see what your options are going to be. The other thing that you see listed here, and it's something that you might find with some particular private student loan lenders is they might offer a loan modification program to help with payments. Again, that's something that can vary. Um, it does vary from private student loan lender to private student loan lender, so it's not gonna be consistent across all of them. So this is where you're gonna wanna reach out specifically, have those conversations to see what options you have available. So next, what we want to go ahead and do on the next slide is we're going to start transitioning and talking more about student loan refinancing and consolidation. And I will share, I have a lot of experience with this just because I did actually leverage um, consolidation when I was doing my student loan repayment. Um, so, you know, it was something that I explored, did my research and decided it was going to be a good option. So on the next slide, what we wanted to do is we wanted to share um, some additional information. So if, if you're considering consolidation in the future, there's a couple of things that you really need to ask yourself in doing your research. And the reason we say you need to do your research and ask these questions is think of consolidation or refinancing those loans. It's taking out a new loan and combining all of your student loans that you have into one. And when you do that, you can't undo a consolidation loan. So you're going to be locked into the new terms of this loan. So this is why we say it's going to be really important that you do your research and ask questions of your loan servicer. So some of the questions that you might ask yourself are going to be, you know, why are you considering refinancing or consolidating your student loans? Um, what types of loans are you thinking of consolidating? Are you thinking of consolidating just your federal loans? Or are you looking at also possibly consolidating private loans? What loans are you thinking about? And then when, you sh when should you actually consider doing the refinancing or consolidation of your student loans? And how does this change the terms of your loans? And what will the interest rate be if you refinance or consolidate those loans? And we're going to go into two different types of refinance or consolidation programs for student loans um, in just a second. But to give you an example, I mentioned to you all that I consolidated the loans. So when I was doing my research, one of the questions um, was what was the interest rate? So all of my loans that I had were at different interest rates and those interest rates on every single loan, they weren't fixed. So they changed every July 1. So every July 1, I was getting a new interest rate. And so it was kind of, 
you know, unnerving when you don't know what it's going to be the following year. So for me, when I was doing my research, that was one of the big questions that I had to ask, you know, why was I doing this? And for, for me, for my personal situation, I had done that to lock in the interest rate. So again, this is where you actually need to do research and ask questions. So on the next slide, what we wanted to do, I mentioned that there's two types of programs. So we're going to go ahead and talk about those in a little bit more detail. So we'll start first with the Federal Direct Consolidation Loan Program. Now, this loan will be offered directly through the federal government, and it really allows you to consolidate your federal student loans only. Now, reasons that a borrower might consider consolidation of their federal loans um, would be to maybe reduce multiple payments if they do have multiple payments, um, lowering it to, you know, one um, it could potentially be to extend the length of time that they have to repay their student loans. So that could be another reason they're exploring it. Um, for me, it, as like I mentioned before, it was to lower my interest rate, get that locked in. Now, when you are considering consolidation, again, we can't stress enough, you have to make sure to do the research because you may lose some of the benefits associated with your original loan terms. And to give you an example of what we mean by that is, we talked about several deferment options. Um, we talked about forbearance options. We talked about the different types of repayment plan options that you have on your federal student loans. If you were to consolidate your federal student loans, one of the big questions you would ask are, you know, what sort of benefits do I lose if I consolidate my loans? Because you want to make sure you don't lose those deferment forbearance options that you have or repayment options if that's something that's important to you. So again, this is where you need to do your research, really ask those questions to see how do the terms of your original loan, how is that gonna change if you were to consolidate? Now there is some additional information if you would like to explore federal consolidation, you can always visit the federal student aid site at, um, well, it's gonna be a really long um, web address that you can see here. So you can definitely jot that down or you can go directly to the federal student aid site at studentaid.gov, and then you can find consolidation information out there. But you can definitely jot down that link of where you can go to get more information. Now, on the other side, for private student loan consolidation, um, this is going to be offered through private lending institutions. And it's really going to allow you as a borrower to refinance or consolidate potentially just your private student loans, or maybe even your private and federal student loans together. Now, reasons um, a borrower may consider consolidating or refinancing their loans into a private student loan could include you know, simplicity, so maybe combining multiple payments into one. It could be potentially to lower a monthly payment or just extending the length of time that they have to repay those loans. Now, whenever you extend the length of time, just keep in mind that you are going to be paying more interest over time whenever you do that. Now, again, some additional points to consider um, when you are consolidating, you may lose certain benefits. So, for example, private consolidation, we were talking about how you may um, be exploring for private only or federal and private together. You need to ask the questions, what benefits would I lose if I combine, say, for example, federal and private student loans together? What sort of postponement options do I have? What sort of deferment options do I have? What sort of repayment plan options do I have? These are going to become really important questions to ask because, again, they may change. If you do a consolidation loan, it may change the terms of that original loan. So you want to know, you know, is that something that is going to be a right decision for you. So definitely, again, do the research, ask those questions, make sure you understand how those terms could potentially change if you were to do a refinance or consolidation loan. So I know we went through a lot of information, but we wanted to share a couple more resources. So on the next slide, we're going to start talking more about additional resources. So let's go to the final slide and we'll walk through some of those with you. So there are a lot of resources out there, again, that can help with answering questions, with getting more information when it comes to repaying your federal loans, your private loans. So to determine your federal loan servicer, we've talked about that a couple of times today. Um, and then we highlighted that there was a change to the address. So you would be visiting uh, nslds.ed.gov. 
again, just know you're going to be redirected to the federal student aid site. You'll need to log in from there to view your information. Again, you'll be able to see all the information about your loans, the type of loans you had, how much you borrowed, um, the institution for what period of time, um, but more specifically, who that loan servicer is. Um, if you have private student loans, you can always, of course, touch base with the financial aid office. They can give you information, um, but you can go to annualcreditreport.com to figure out who your loan servicer is for your private student loans. And then, of course, a really great, I would say, all-encompassing site is the federal student aid site, so studentaid.gov. And here you can find more information about everything that we cover today. So you'll find information specific to, you know, what are the different types of federal loans that you might have? What are the terms of those loans? You'll be able to find out information about deferments, um, forbearances, grace period, the different types of repayment plan options that we discussed in detail. You'll be able to find public service loan forgiveness tools you'll be able to find the loan simulator. So all of those things that we were talking about today, you'll be able to find on the federal student aid site. So that's gonna be a really great resource for you. Now, if um, you, know, you have to report a dispute regarding your federal student loan, um, you can visit the ombudsman office. You can see the link here, um, reach out to them for any disputes that you might have with regards to your student loans. And then we want to share a great resource that we have available um, at Wells Fargo. So you can receive information on financial resources for all stages of college. You can do that by visiting wellsfargo.com forward slash college resources. And what you'll do is you'll fill out the form um, online and then we will send you information based on what you're telling us you would like to learn more about. So, you know, as we close up, and Sylvia, you'll be able to add to this for sure, the most important thing that in our experience, or I know as I've talked to students, the most important thing you can do is stay in touch with your student loan servicer or loan provider. They are not mind readers. They don't know what's happening with you. It's important to keep that communication open with them. Let them know what's going on. As you can see, there are a lot of options when it comes to student loans. Um, if you need to make changes to a repayment plan or postponement options, so definitely let them know what's going on. Sylvia, anything you'd add? Well, I no, that's that's a great um, great information, Casey. Uh, I guess the only thing I would add is uh, I just love the fact that if you make it automatic, uh, that you may get an interest rate reduction. You don't have to worry about when your payments due is if it's going to be on time. And I know there were some questions around credit and that's how it will impact your credit. If you're on time every time, that's gonna improve your credit, right? If you're late, that's not gonna improve your credit. So um, actually, I just love the paying on time every time. But Casey, I want you to answer a question we have that came in the Q and A, uh, cause it's, it is a little bit different um, because you, know, you talked about uh, student loan consolidation. So here's a question. Is it possible to modify a private student loan to a federal student loan. So we're going from private into federal. <laughs> Is that possible? Unfortunately, that's not possible. Um, you, will, you won't have that opportunity to consolidate private student loans into a federal loan. So with federal consolidation, it is strictly only available for federal student loans. So unfortunately, you. no, you can't bring private into federal. Right. But in some cases, you can bring federal into private. And that's what she was speaking to on the previous slide. So I just wanted, even though it kind of sounds the same, it's not. Um, so thank you for that. Um, we talked about this earlier. There was another question about are loans available to international students. Um, just please speak to your financial aid office in your campus. You might have some available um, to you there. But um, any, any other questions, anything that has come? Let's see, it looks like we do have another question. It's, let me see if I can, uh, let's see, it says, there have been conversations in the news of service providers telling borrowers to go into forbearance uh, when an income-driven repayment plan would have been better. Um, if you have trouble, trouble um, affording payments, isn't, generally, isn't it generally better to look into income-driven payment plans before going into forbearance? Um, that's, that's one of the questions. And then also, is there a limited number of months you can go into forbearance? 
Did, did you get that, Casey? I did. And Sylvia, we're going to tag team this one because <laughs> <laughs> these are a lot of great questions. Okay, you're at roll, first. Rolled into one from our anonymous attendee, which this is great because we all are probably thinking the same thing. We see the news. So this is where you all attending today's session is a great starting point because you have a lot of the resources where you can start up front being your advocate and understanding more about your student loans. So like the student aid site that we were sharing with you, that's gonna be a great site to educate yourself, really learn about the loans that you have, learn about those postponement options that are available because they do go into a lot of detail on that site to say, okay, if I'm thinking about, I can't make my payment right now, maybe I need to just change the repayment plan. So go read about those income driven repayment plans. And that's gonna equip you to be have better conversations pretty much with your loan providers. So you'll be able to ask those specific questions. You know, I'm thinking I don't wanna do a forbearance because I don't want that accrued interest. Um, can I switch my repayment plan? But you know to ask those questions. So you also have to be an advocate for yourself. And I think, again, you all attending today's session is a great first step because you'll have all of the resources and all of the information about those different options that you can make informed decisions about what's gonna work best for your financial situation. The other thing I'll add when it comes to interest, because I know there were a couple of questions that had come in about accrued interest and how quickly that adds up. Do know that you have an opportunity if you want to make interest only payments, you can do that. If you have money from a job and maybe you want to put that towards your loans, you can do that without penalty. So do know, um, you know, especially like, for example, accrued interest, uh, you can be paying that as you go along so that it doesn't accrue, it doesn't get capitalized. But I would say the best thing with regards to what works best for you if you are running into some challenges, because life happens, right, when it comes to repayment is definitely leverage the resources we shared, inform yourself, and this way, when you go to your loan servicer, you'll be prepared to ask the right questions based on what your financial situation is. Sylvia, would you add anything? The only thing that I'll add is just really short and sweet. I love the question because you, uh, the anonymous person does actually understand payment versus not payment, right? And so, you know, the question of, you know, wouldn't it have been better to go into income driven versus forbearance. And so I'll just say anytime you're making uh, a payment on your loan, it is a good thing, right? As opposed to not making payment and having that interest accrue, like Casey um, said. So yes. Um, and then the second piece to that, and I'll throw it back to you, Casey, is there a number <laughs> of months you can go into forbearance. But typically that really is you will, if your forbearance will be, is approved, you'll get the information on that. And that's what Casey said. You want to wait until you have it in writing. And then uh, the, the specific detail will tell you how long your forbearance is. But I'll swing it back over to you, Casey. No, and that was perfect, Sylvia. So a lot of it, this is where you're going to have to, you know, have that conversation with the loan servicer. Make sure you understand, okay, if I'm doing a general forbearance, this is the length of time that I have. Um, on that. So they are going to share and will communicate with you, you know, how many months you've been granted a particular forbearance and what type of forbearance you were given. So that's all going to be um, the loan servicer is going to be your best friend. Um, I know they were my best friend because I had student loans and I was like, what do I do? Um, and even I'll, I'll acknowledge at, I worked in a financial aid office, so I should have known a lot of these questions, right? But I was, I knew what to ask. So it really helps, right? Just knowing the information, it made the process a lot smoother and don't be afraid to say, I'm not quite understanding. Can you explain that again? Or, you know, follow up with your next question. Don't hesitate and don't be afraid to ask questions. I think our our, um, our Dewey has a question. So, Mr. Norwood, <laughs> go right ahead. So, Sylvia, thank you so much. Casey, thank you all. And I know we've seen this in the chat. Lots of folks are asking about replay options. And so, yes, we will have this available for replay. And to anyone who's watching the replay, thank you. Please share this information with, with others. I've got kind of a one-two question here. I had just very direct. Are there additional resources available for a scholar or a student that may be sustained an impact as a result of the pandemic. Any data that you all can share uh, in, in those areas, I, I think is kind of where this student is going. And then another one posed a question, you know, 
is it important to immediately start paying or should I start investing? And I know you all are not financial advisors, but how do you balance through the budgeting side of paying back loans and also the notion of kind of paying back yourself, which you've heard mentioned so so many times before. So two, hopefully not two tough ones there for you all. <laughs> Sylvia, I'll let you start this time. <laughs> Sure. Thank you, Casey. So I'll start with your question around, um, you know, if, if you're having difficulty, yeah. you know, during this time making student loan payments. So a couple of things that have um, come, you know, to fruition right now uh, during this pandemic time is, is so if you are a current student, um, you know, there has been some relief given to, to um, uh, students that are attending colleges and universities through the CARES Act. So you okay. have that. But if you're um, if you're if you're not a current student and say that you're actually in repayment right now, um, what has happened is um, they the government has actually um, said, basically, you know, you're not required to make your payments right now. So in the interest is not being accrued as well. So that's that's right. kind of a double bonus. Right. So that's what's going on right now with um, with 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 those that are in student loan repayment. And I will tell you that, that it has been a big help, you know, just knowing some students um, that have been uh, in repayment for a while now, it's kind of giving them a breather if they need that to kind of get their finances in order so that when this, um, when the time is up to where they do have to start making repayments again, you know, they might be in a better financial situation. And Casey, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe, um, it goes through the end of January. January 31st right now is um, the time frame in which right. if you're in repayment, you're not required to make a payment right now, nor is the interest accruing. Is that correct, Case? That's correct. And um, just to add to that also, this is going to be for federal student loans. Yes. So if you have private student loans or if the borrower say, had, had private student loans that they were making payments on, they would have to contact that private student lender, lender directly. Uh, but during this time, what Sylvia was mentioning was a pause that was given under the federal loan programs. And she's right, through January 31st of 2022, borrowers um, had that pause on their student loan payments. Um, and, you know, now would be the, the individuals now may want to start having some of those conversations as they're getting closer to that time ending, like what would their next steps be? Um, especially, like Sylvia was mentioning, it was used to help give that breather. So depending on where they are right now, you know, do they still need a breather? This is where those conversations with the loan servicer early on to make sure that they're ready to go when that does expire and they have everything situated, you know, having that again, conversation with the loan servicer is going to be important. Okay, very good, very good. Casey, Sylvia, do either of you all want to touch that other loaded question that, <laughs> that, that, that I put, I won't put it on the student that I posed, pay yourself first, Pay your, pay your debt first. How, how do you balance through that equation and maybe spend 30 seconds around the budgeting piece? Because I know that's something else that we've touched on a little bit here today. Why, why that's so important. Sure. So I'll, I'll jump in real quick. So, you know, when I think about, um, so it, it's it's an individual thing to some degree, you know, yes. first of all, you really do have to pay off your student loans. I personally don't like that. So I just took a deep dive and just did, uh, paid it off as quickly as possible. And that just freed up my um, discretionary funds, if you will, so that I could do some investing more so than I would have otherwise. Um, but you know, you have to you have to um, think about things, make choices, um, and decide. You know, that's why I like putting together a plan and, yes. and looking at what interest rate, what interest you're paying what interest you can potentially receive. And we know, you know, stocks go up and down, but your 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 student loan is gonna be there. So, you know, I'm, I'm a proponent of getting rid of debt um, more so than anything before I do anything else. But I'll let Casey give you a <laughs> <laughs> Well, I will say, uh, and this is why Sylvia and I are best friends, right? So uh, I feel the same way. Like it, I, it was just something growing up, it was just very, adverse when it came to having debt. I mean, I knew I needed to do it because that was the only way I could pay for school. Mm. Um, so I took advantage of the student loans to help pay for school so I can complete it. But it is an individual choice. Um, it's up to you as far as what's going to be best for you based on your situation, based on your current debt obligations. Um, for myself, 
this is where you have a lot of those conversations of setting out a plan, really asking those questions. Do I need to go to Starbucks every day? Do I need to go out? Is that money I can save and redirect towards my student loans? And it's not fun when your coworkers go out to eat and you're like, yeah, I can't. I'm saving it for the weekend because I have student loans and I'm yep. paying. I will say I gave up trips with friends, you know, until I got to a position where I could felt comfortable with the traveling. So I think it's agree with Sylvia. It's an individual choice for myself. I also don't like to have the debt. So it was a big focus for me to try to pay them off as quickly as possible because I just didn't want that. Um, but again, it's, it's your personal choice. You know, Maybe your parents can help provide some perspective if you ask them, you know, kind right. of what you've done or you have a friend, um, a trusted advisor, mentor, find, you know, have a conversation, set up an appointment with your banker at your local bank to see if there's somebody they can connect you with to have right. that deeper conversation about based on what my short term goals are, based on what my long term goals are, you know, what would work best because they'd be able to have that deeper conversation with you. Very good. So for, it's perfectly okay to phone a friend, get insight from others, get some guidance and direction, but also, again, important to make decisions that are best best for you. Uh, and, and again, build that budget, which we're going to talk more about that even, even during next month's uh, conversation as we talk a little bit about credit and, and things in those kinds of areas. So team, I'm, I'm monitoring the clock. I, I know we're coming right up on uh, the end of our webinar here for today. So I think we'll end our Q&A here, if that's all right. What I am going to do is bring up one final slide because we can't leave without getting a closing <laughs> thought from you all. And also, I know I've seen some of the LinkedIn requests coming in, so I hope that you're getting lots and lots of requests for, from the students. So, Casey, if it's okay, we'll start with you with a closing thought or maybe that word of encouragement that you can share. You know, I had some student loans that I had to pay off too. My wife had some that she had to pay off. So, team, it, students, it is possible to be able to do it. So, Casey, maybe share a closing thought, and Sylvia, we'll, we'll let you share a closing thought, and we'll give you all some final items before we get out of here. Awesome. Yes. And thank you all again for sticking with us. Um, it has been great to be able to share the information with you. Do know, I mean, I know it's not fun to take out loans. Um, you know, some of us need to do them in order to get through college. It is an investment in you. Don't hesitate. I can't stress enough. Be in contact with your loan servicer. Ask questions. There's nothing wrong with asking questions till you get an answer to when you feel you're comfortable and you understand that ask questions, reach out to your loan servicer, let them know what's going on. Always used to tell students, there's no reason why you should default on your federal loans because there's so many options to help you avoid that type of situation. Again, it's just having that conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Casey Galindo. Sylvia, bring us home. All right, well, hey, thank you. And also thank you for um, APIA. We really appreciate all the support. Um, you guys are awesome. Thanks, Nicole, you did a great job forwarding those slides. I appreciate that. Uh, but as far as you scholars, thanks for hanging in there. We know this information, um, while not fun, uh, can be informative and hopefully you found something that will be um, helpful to you. And one of the things I guess that I'll say to you, you know, I already told you, you know, you want to make it automatic, but also, yeah. um, you know, as you're paying off these student loans, know that, you know, you are, once you get those paid off, man, what, what, how exciting that's going to be and all the financial freedom that you will have once you do that. And so just stay diligent. Thank you so much. And we do appreciate your time. All right, Sylvia, thanks a million. Again, team, please get in contact with Casey, get in contact with Sylvia. If there was a question that we didn't get an opportunity to get to today, inbox them, reach out to them. I'm sure they'll be happy to jump on the phone with you or be able to answer those questions. Uh, electronically but thanks so so much and the feedback is just pouring in with lots of thank yous and folks that are very very appreciative of the information and requests for the debt which would which be taken care of on the replay side of things and so all right listen you go hang in here we'll look at the last couple of items that we have right before we we close out here for the evening so just some quick reminders that we want to give you around some things that we ask you to keep in mind here. So as we continue on, uh, just a quick reminder, go ahead and get connected in with us. We're always interested in feedback. You can actually use the link that's here on the screen. And then we'll also send this out when we share the playback details with folks later on. But please give us feedback. Take a minute, fill out the survey, give us your thoughts, commentary on things that you enjoyed about today's presentation. 
and then also give us suggestions on things that we can do to make these presentations better for the future. We are going to be bringing back the series again in 2022, Yahoo! So even if there are other topics that you'd love for us to, to touch on, go ahead and give us a heads up on those areas. So go ahead and fill out that feedback form for us, and then we'll, get, we'll continue to keep the conversation going from there. All right, last couple of items here, team, the Beyond College webinar series, of which you're participating in. Listen, happy to report, we've now got 10 of these completed for the year. I think when you get 10, they send you a set of steak knives or something. So steak knives are coming to mail, Casey and Sylvia, and the scholars are like, what does that mean? Back in the day, banks used to give away steak knives and toasters. <laughs> so you get to say, but the bottom line is you can access the replay. All of these are available on demand via the API scholars. YouTube channel. And so a little bit later this year, we'll get all of these uploaded on Wells Fargo's YouTube channel as well. But for now, you can access the playback here. And you'll see now we've only got two presentations left. We referenced this one a little bit earlier. We're going to have a great discussion around building responsible credit. And then in November, we're going to be talking about mentors and sponsors. And so thanks in advance to our buddy, uh, Bonnie Wallace, who's going to be helping us out with the credit discussion, and also to Lynette, Rutledge and, and, and also uh, Liesl Sullivan, who's going to be helping us out with our mentors and sponsors. Great partners that do an amazing job every time around. So access the playback and share the information via social media. Use that hashtag WFC Beyond College if you want to pass it along. Hey, some additional resources to keep in touch. You know, don't forget about our wonderful university programs uh, and, and options that are opportunities, better yet, that are available through our talent community. I know some of you all, especially the HBCU scholars, will be participating in our UNCF Empower Me Tour that's coming up here later this week, and also programming that we're doing with the Thurgood Marshall College Fund, TMCF for their Leadership Institute. So special thanks to the scholars that are joining those sessions, but get connected into the talent community. Right now is a really, really great time to look for internship opportunities into the 2022 timeframe and also to start focusing in on what a career opportunity is going to look like after graduation. So hit those links and you'll get lots of information. We want to shout our, our great partners in the military talent space. Our buddy Sean Passmore and all of his team that are doing amazing work. We have lots of veterans that join these broadcasts. So please, if you need to get in contact with folks specifically from a military recruiting perspective, reach out to Sean and his team via that military recruiting at wellsforward.com website. So Sean, thanks so much for all you do and for your service and connecting, uh, helping us connect with all these wonderful veterans. TFS, this is right in line. This is a wonderful aggregator site where you can get resources to help you earn scholarships or, or find ways to pay for your higher education journey. So huge thank to, to Richard and his team for the great work that they do at TFS. Go ahead and look up that website again, tuition funding sources to take advantage of some of the resources there. And as we mentioned before, the wonderful Beyond College webinar series, which we're continuing with. All right, with that said, last slide here, we'll give you a reminder to join us again on October the 21st at 4 p.m for our discussion around building responsible credit and why credit matters. Again, we heard some of those pieces today. And so I think we'll be able to add on some of the, those elements with our presentation that's coming up next month. If you have questions about anything, please do not hesitate to contact us. Please use the hashtags here to share these wonderful links and this information on social media. And again, hey, if you heard something that was especially great today, throw it onto your social media, at mention Casey, at mention Sylvia, at mention Wells Fargo or API scholars. And let's find ways to share that information with others that we think could benefit from it. I'll end by thanking Sylvia, by thanking Casey, by thanking Karen, by thanking Nicole, by thanking Barbara Scotland. And I'm going to do this. We have a great partner of ours named Cheryl McDonald. And I've been talking about Cheryl for years. She is the, the consummate professional within our industry and she is just about to retire and somewhere she's blushing when she's either listening to this live or listening to the playback so cheryl a we love you thank you so much for the work that you've done to make this series so amazing for our scholars we appreciate all the work that you've accomplished over these years and just wish you continued success as you head off into into retirement and just wish you really really well so big shout out to cheryl mcdonald you can find her on linkedin too you can have to do some digging uh, but you guys can, can, can find her on uh, LinkedIn as well. And again, Barbara Scotland, special thanks to you for all that you do to keep these wonderful sessions going in, in a great way. With that said, everyone have a wonderful rest of your evening, continued success throughout your college semester. If we can be of any assistance to you, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks a million, everybody. Till next time. Good night.